stakeholders, about getting focus and getting driven improvement through that. So mode of operation, uh, and uh, the nickname for it is, is the Moo. Uh, some people call it the MO, so they don't like the Moo, but it, it's effectively many of the that we do. Uh, and, and it's it's something that's evolved from a couple of other concepts, but effectively it's just with, just with us. So I'm, yeah, as I said, with Carnival, and I work in, in, in an operations area, and we use this to, to, to do those things, engagement, focus, and improvement. So I started exactly to the day one year ago at Carnival, and one of the things I always dread when I start in a new place is standing in the lift, and the CEO is there, and he says, so who are you, what do you do, how do you measure yourself, and how good are you? Quite aggressive questions from the CEO, but maybe because America you might ask that, and I would really struggle to answer those on my first day, or even my first month, and actually, if you ask people honestly around uh, our team and organization, they would also struggle to do that. And now I can answer those things, so I can say, yeah, I'm our leader, I'm head of applications, our job is to maintain and enhance software-based services in our organization, with part of technology services, we have a set of very clear uh, and published KPIs, and how good are we? Well, we're, we're a bronze level service, if you have bronze, gold, uh, sorry, bronze, silver and gold, and if you want to mark us out of 10, because we're IT, we're, we're 5.4 out of 10 at the moment. Um, so that's, I, I don't mind being in the lift with the CEO at, at, at anymore. <laughs> so what's the objective of the move? So this, by the way, is the move. I'm standing in front of it now, and I'll go into the detail of it. But the objective of the move is to say what we do, uh, why we, or what we do, why we do it, um, how we measure that, and where we are in terms of the attainment of that, that on that measurement. So exactly like I said, so we're an operations uh, team. Uh, these are all the things we do within our operations. Why do we do it? So that's an important point in terms of important point in terms of engagement. Why we do something? Uh, I was considering this a few weeks ago. And if you, some some guy in our team goes home and he says to his partner, so the partner says, so how was your day today? What did you do? I said, well, I did X. I have no idea why I did it, but I did it. I think it made a difference, but I don't know. But if they understand why they what they're, why they're doing what they're doing, they could go home and say, I did X. It meant that we were compliant, we were within health and safety, it meant that my big boss could do this report or we hit some sales target. It, it feels a lot better to understand the why. And the important part of the move is it's not an academic uh, reading textbook saying this is what we should do for development or for operations. Uh, it's, it's appropriate to your organisation. So the other part of the move, the, the mode of operation, is it's not IT specific. Uh, it's, it's probably like Agile, you could use it in any uh, environment. It's well suited to IT, but I, I think you could apply it to anywhere. So what it's not, it's not time constrained. So it's not saying, this is what we do, uh, this is what good looks like, and we need to achieve this in three months or a year. It may take you, it may take a long journey, it may take you two, three, five years to achieve what you think good is. It's not budget constrained, so it doesn't say, oh, well, we haven't got that money to to do this so we can't put it on, onto our mobile operation, saying what do you think should be good, where should you be? So if you need to buy a new tool, and this year you haven't got the budget for that, you put it on the move and say, we need this tool for this reason so we can improve this score, and then you give your stakeholders, you empower them to say that this is why we want the tool, and they can make a decision uh, about whether they want to invest in that or not. And it's not resource constraints in the same way with budget. You don't say, we can't do this because we haven't got enough bodies to do it. Uh, that's up for you, the budget holders, the, your stakeholders to say, right, if that's what you need, then you'll invest in getting more resources. And it's not about the how you do that. So it's, it's what and why, but it doesn't say, oh, and this is how we're going to achieve it. Because how we're going to achieve it, if we stated that now, we'd, we'd probably get it, 50-50 oh, would be good if we got that right. But this, the what and why is something that you come together as a team, probably your management and leadership would, would help define that. But then it's up to the team to say, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to try and do X in this way, in this method. If that works, great. You've got the management and the, and the organization have got what they wanted. If it doesn't work, you try something else. And so it, it's not about uh, how you get the outcomes. That's done outside when you, however, however you work iteratively, saying, let's try this, let's try that. It's saying, stating the what, stating the outcome, so people know what they're trying to achieve. Uh, and I said, it's, it's, not the, it's not an industry textbook to say um, this is how we should do it. You wouldn't take someone else's move in the same way you wouldn't take 
probably an agile way of working, say, right, this is where we're going to work because that's what it says in the book. You'd, you'd adapt it to your organization. So this is slightly bigger than A0, but effectively A0 format. This is it. It's all it is is a piece of paper, um, and we're talking about it now. But uh, it's A0 because it's different. It's something to look at. It's quite big. You can get quite a lot of stuff on. Uh, it's a bit of a wow factor. Uh, people sort of that shock and awe saying, look at this. Uh, so it's different. It's interesting. It's tactile. You can touch it, stroke it. It's a little bit weird, but that's why I like doing office. Uh, it's engaging. So th this format uh, of doing a PowerPoint presentation is kind of everything this is against. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to get a big group of people around. But ideally, uh, I was talking to that friend from over there, you grab somebody and you come and talk to them. You grab a team of, of, of six people, like an agile team, and come and get them talking them around, around here, and they can start pointing and seeing different bits on it. Uh, so it encourages those standard conversations. It broadens the, the scope of the viewer. So the likely bit is, when you look at this, so if you're part, if you work for job site, so that's quite a lot of you, uh, you'll probably work in a, an area, so say if you worked in development, you say, right, that's my bit. But then you look across and go, wait a second, operations are doing this. We could do that, we could help them with that. So it's to try and encourage you to look outside of your area of specialism. Um, Forces focus, so there is a limited amount of space you can get on, and you should probably limit yourself on how small your font goes. Um, so ours is 12, and we said we're not changing. Uh, and so you'll probably start off struggling to think, what am I going to put on here? What do we do? And then after a while, you're going, you know, we need to get rid of some stuff on here because that's it's kind of important, but not as important as, we, as this other new thing um, that, that we've recently thought of. So for example, we, we do a lot of things because we're ships. It's all about health and safety. That's our number one concern. Amazingly. We didn't have it on our roof for about four months. And then we were all taken off to a workshop, and we came out from the workshop and I said, I can't believe we haven't got health and safety on there. So I, I stripped some other stuff out that was a bit fluffy and, and got that on. And so it's an actual virtual focus point. So you're saying, we were in a meeting uh, a couple of months ago with, with some colleagues, and we're talking, oh, I'll go back, and we're talking about doing something. And I said, well, why are we talking about this? Is this really important? We're spending time, we haven't got much time, we've got loads of stuff to do. It's not even on the move, it's not important, let's just Either we put it on the move and say it's important, or we stop talking about it. Um, so so that, that's, that's that focus and it's that limitation. So if we'd done this in PowerPoint and each of these boxes were a slide, I reckon we would have just gone to town. We'd be at 100 slides by now. It'd be great, really, really boring, and it would take a long time to get through, and people would never revisit it again. So I wasn't sure about the format of what we get here. So that is the move. It's almost the same size as real life, so it's quite a good projector. This is a much better version. So the structure of this, so there's different colours. I, I like colours. Everyone, people who work with me or work for me know that if they want to get, they might need to say yes, just need colours, colour coding and pictures work pretty well. Um, <laughs> so I, I hate documents. So in, in, the, in the structure, we've got speed read up here. That's the introduction top left saying, if, if I'm not here to talk them through it, or someone who sort of evangelist of it wants to talk through, they can read that and get an idea of it. What's in it for me? In fact, yeah, I won't go through this too much, I've got some slides on this. What's it for me? Stakeholders, your type and principles and a health check, and then different areas. So we've got we've broken ourselves to down into some groupings of sections of what we work on. So for us, we work, we support projects um, in their development of, of services. We're, we're an operational team, so we do ITIL operations. We have different teams, and these go in here, and then we have some foundations at the bottom. But that it's for you to make up what your grouping is. So this is the, the section at the top, so the speed read, and it's actually what I'm saying now, so it's, it's what we do, what we're responsible for, what good looks like, how it's measured, and then it talks about the different sections in here and about the scoring. So the people and purpose, so when someone's looking at this for the first time, then we might have talked about it today and then we, we come and talk a bit more. You're, the natural question most people are saying is, so how does this affect me? What's, what's, what, what's the point of this for me? So if you're in the team that we're talking about, so if you are, if you if, if you work for job site, um, you say well, in the dev team you say right, I, I, what what's this? And for us it says, uh, and this would be adapted to whatever your move becomes. We say we've got a clear vision of what good looks like, what we're trying to achieve, and my objectives are aligned to something in this in, in the model. So everyone's objective in, in our department, we've got 50 or 60 people. Uh, everyone's objectives is 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 directly or indirectly related to something on here. And it, it was really easy to do the objectives, and all the objectives were really smart, so they're really achievable. And we need to run it, so we've been running this since 
creating this since August last year, so this is our first year in terms of using it for objectives. So it'll be interesting to see at the end of the year how it comes out. We shouldn't have the disputes that we have normally with people saying that's a very fluffy objective. I think I achieved it. The manager says, no, you didn't. It should be very definitive about whether you achieved the objective or not. And as a stakeholder, so we've got a list of our stakeholders, our, our, our CIOs in here. My missus, I showed her this last night, she said, why is that guy in capital? And I said, he's because he's the big boss and he's involved. Once. He's in the middle, involved. And then we've got other people who we work with. We work with project teams and our architecture teams and our, our users and our external parties. And then what do we do? So as a group, this is, a, this is your elevator pitch to the CEO. And we have that, we have that um, consistently. We understand that as a group, certainly as a management team. When we came to do this, it took us about two hours to agree what we did. And in theory, it should be a really easy thing to do for a group of about five or six people to say, this is what we do. And, and I think it's useful to do that because we now have got a consistent view. Um, There's a little bit here that effectively your the vision, mission, purpose, and values. It's the if you walked past it in the office, you know who this is associated with. So our senior management team have come up with some mission and, and uh, their purpose. This often isn't communicated, but it's numerous levels down. So this is to get that that statement out there. It was sent out in an email, but people as part of the PDF, people would have forgotten that. So this is to keep reinforcing it and to help drive when we're thinking about what we should be doing that mission and, and the purpose keeps driving that down. I and mean, this is our vision as a department, so turning the lights up is a play on keeping the lights on, but we're, we're actually just turning them up some more than keeping them on. And this is what we're doing this kind of day to conversion. Um, principles. So these drive what, all the things we do and say, what, how do we think, what are, what's our, what drives us? So some key things are here. We want to be predictable, we're like a lot of people. We, we're uh, being predictable and transparent and self-improving. So when we're thinking about different sections, that, that's what drives us. So we're going to these sections, so there's tons of sections here that are grouped in different ways. I've just picked out a couple. So incident management. Uh, we start off the section by saying, what is this about? We're trying to look away to terminology and uh, excluding some of our partners, uh, so our stakeholders who may not be from our area, may not be IT, um, even our, uh, some of our senior stakeholders, we're using some acronyms that they don't know, so we try and avoid, so we, yeah, in our world we, we, we only ever talk about SLAs, but someone may not understand that, so we, we try and put it in. So we said, what is an incident? Uh, explain that, and then said one of our, some of our key um, performance indicators on that, so 90% of our incidents resolved in SLA. Stick in the, what the SLAs are, we like pretty pictures, it's more interesting than lots of words, so we're trying to put some icons that, that are associated with those. So, this so far it sounds, you go things like you've gone crazy with just measuring everything and just getting stats out of systems that said what people are, there's no human side, as we were talking about earlier on, but people in there, I think mean, you can measure everything, um, it's, uh, one, of the, one of the phrases we, we say on here is uh, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. If you can't improve it, sorry, if you can't measure it, you can't control it. If you can't control it, you can't improve it. And they say, what about the human side of it? So we can still drive that human side from measurements. So you can get feedback from people. So you're saying, how did we do? What's your feeling on that? And do a survey, and we get that, 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 that opinion back. We may not agree with it, but it should drive a conversation, which will either change their opinion or change the way we work. And we have in here have some silly ones. So we, we have thought about the one-to-ones. I, I've inherited lots of people recently uh, uh, in terms of line management. And I, I religiously do my one-to-ones because otherwise I'll, I'll lose score and I, I want to get good scores. Um, and, and we have team socials. So we, we had a, a lunch this week and that's a little tick box on our, our thing. So it, it does mechanicalize things, but it also forces you to do it and stops you forgetting to do it.
well, to be honest, you can get to do it, just get a lower score. I mean, we're all about getting better scores. So this is about the measurement. So if you can't measure it, you can't prove it, you can have feedback surveys. I did one of these before at another company, and actually we, we were um, uh, trying to get into a PSF model, it's a professional services firm model, and we broke it into four parts, and the part I was working about was all about people, so there's a whole um, A0 on people, and it started to feel, feel really fluffy, and started to feel we were just talking about kittens and lots of nice things, and we just got a feeling that if we did it, and did it without measurement, we'd do it as a one-off, and then we wouldn't go back to it, and we'd go, that's all good, we're, we're fine, it's great. Um, but it becomes a dead document. So this, by, by measuring it, keeps you honest. It says, are we, doing, are we still doing this? Are we improving or are we just staying the same? And if we're staying the same, why are we staying the same? And you can explain that to, to your stakeholders. So, and it clarifies for stakeholders where we are. So for example, we've got in here an information management, uh, sorry, information security management section. So <coughs> after talk, talk, I imagine a lot of CIOs are really keen on this and they don't want to be hacked and they have issues and have compliance and data being, personal data being, but um, we, we're really honest with this, we think we're a promise um, for where we should be, and our CIO will be driving us to get gold this year. Um, and that's, we want to do some other stuff that's much cooler, we want to get into monitoring and, and, and work on that, but before we do that, we have to focus. And when our CIO talks to us and said, how come so-and-so application went down at the weekend, well, when you're monitoring, it's because we're focusing on security and getting that right first. We can only do so much unless you want to give us lots of more resources and budget and then say, no, focus on security. And it drives that focus improvement. So you can say, we were bronze in January. If we're still bronze in April and then June, what's happening? Something's going wrong. You need to change the way you're improving. So this is this health check up here. So it's not a rag status. It's just the colors of the of the different sections, we've tried to, because we're working very much in ITIL world, we've tried to align it with ITIL colours, we've had to include brown, sadly, because um, ITIL have brown. Um, so these are indicative scores, they're not our actual scores, I don't want to publish our actual scores on, on a slide deck, so I've just made these up, but these are all out of 10, we're, and each, so each section is scored out of 10, each, there's lots of points in each section, scored out of 10, and we average all the sections and, and give an overall score, so we don't weight any section in terms of saying, oh, security is really important, that should be worth double points. Just because we felt it would just get too complicated. So, so we, we don't do that. So how, how do you do your own move? If this sounds something that you think, oh, I'd be interested in doing that. So there's a Visio attempt to, I've done all this in Visio. It's actually quite an old version of Visio, nothing fancy. I'm happy to share that, I'll, I'll put that up on the site after this. Um, so use Visio template, you, you get together with a group of perhaps also you've seen the leadership and say, what are our sections, uh, what, what sections, what kind of different things do we do? Can we break those down into sections and then can we group those in any way? And then for each section, uh, we found doing a, a whiteboard session it, with one to four people. If you get too many more, it, it just gets too confusing, there's too many voices. And again, you go through and say, right, what do we do in this area? Um, why do you do it? And what are those measurements around it? Then someone needs to be the, the leader of this and they would write up that review. Then once you've done a few, print it out, and then get the team, the wider team, to come in and give some comments on it. We, 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 we did this, and we actually forgot a whole team, because they came along and said, how do we fit into this? And we're like, oh, good point, we've forgotten about you. And we sound really bad, I'm just being honest here, but we, we just forgot about a whole area. And it's good that we got them, and then we got them into a session and, and did that bit. Um, so then we created a metric spreadsheet, so there's an Excel spreadsheet, um, we've indicated there, that, that we, that we to all these different scores, we talk around that, and that creates even more conversation about how do you score something, what, what is a valid uh, measurement of, of incidents or, or how we do in terms of health and safety. And then we're working on a quarterly basis. So each quarter, we score, we score everything. First quarter is quite painful because you've got to go through the points of working out how you score it. But after that, it's a fairly simple process, and you just say, are, are we improving? Are we getting worse? Are the areas that we focused on uh, improving? And we've got this term, someone came up with it, called chewing the moose, so chewing the cud, chewing the moo. Uh, and that's all quite agile focus. So we review it, say, how did we do in terms of our score? We talk about retrospect, and then we plan our next quarter of improvement. Say, right, for example, we really want to do monitoring, that's cool, but we have to do security management first, we have to do this first. So, um, and when we focus on that, we say, how are we improving on that? This is an example, it's a really mucky whiteboard, because our cleaners have done something strange with it. But, uh, this is an example of, of a, a section, it took us an hour to do, it's all about our infrastructure team. Uh, the black bits are, what do we do? And then we use a red pen to say, 
how do we measure that? Uh, and broke that up, and it, that, that created a section, a fairly quick thing to do once, once you get used to it. So some tips that we found, we've learned from doing it. So explain or avoid jargon. Um, don't assume. We, we work with Italians and Germans who, uh, their English isn't as good as ours, obviously. It's pretty much better than our Italian and German. Um, but and avoid jargon um, for, for our stakeholders in the business. So if you've got an app room, expand on it. I was talking to someone about uh, access management, and they kept talking about PICDs, and they've been working it for years. I said, so what's a PICD? And actually, they didn't know. So they went off and found out, because they just lived and breathed it so much. So it's good for that. So be clear, this is your door to the outside world. So other people will come into your organization, uh, or come walk past your office, you grab them, try not to be too physical, and say, this is what we do. So it should be easy for them to, to work through and understand how they fit in and what they're, how this influences them. My personal thing, I like colors and pictures, so I, I recommend using lots of colors and pictures. Make sure it's understandable. So that's why on Speed Read we said, we, we showed what the, uh, the color format meant. Um, put in a prominent place if you can. Ours is, we have a, a management area. It sits behind our management area, behind my desk, on a whiteboard that's rolled on a roller board, um, like a, one you can, on wheels you can roll on the office. So we keep grabbing people. I, we had our global head of security come round. I, I was introduced to him, but the person forgot to tell me who they were. They just told me his name was Gary. And I grabbed him and talk, started talking about this. And then he said, oh, what, how, what do you do about data privacy? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to do that. And then he gave me his card and he was head of global head of security. But it was good that I explained it, and now we can put something about privacy in, which we should be doing. So we're being honest. I think he hopefully appreciated that, and we're going to fix it and, and do it. So yeah, about being honest. Uh, so live and breathe it. It's all about the objectives. Objectives are really easy to set. Um, training. If someone says, can I be trained in this? Can I go on this training course? You should say, of course. How is it going to improve our score? Where, where is it going to be focused on here? How will it improve? Because when you go on it, when you come back, we should see some, even if it's a very minor, improvement in that area or, or areas. And then when you're in meetings, as I said before, it's that virtual, either have it in the meeting, roll it in, or it's that virtually sitting there, you're imagining it. I've got a, um, I've got a little A3 printout of it. I took it into a meeting today, we're all talking about data privacy, and I've been scribbling notes on it saying, we need to get this in here, this is really important, we'll be fine for 4% of our global revenue if we don't do this. So it, it's, it, it's great for saying, where are we? When I'm in project meetings, in different phases of a project, I say, well, have we done these bits? Have we delivered? These are our deliverables. Have we delivered these? Why haven't we delivered these? We're not going to the next phase until we understand that. Um, and then each quarter, when you improve, hopefully, that's what you should be doing, go out and in the agile way, celebrate it and say, this is a good thing. Make something out of it. So you're not just constantly drudgingly going along saying, this is what we do. So, to summarise, that was a really quick summary. To summarise, it's about engagement. So, once you've got this up and running, as an individual, as a team member, and as a department, you should know what you're doing and why you're doing it, uh, where you're going, and how you fit into the bigger picture. And one of the guys who works with the manager said, having this is so easy for him to run his team, because he, he works on a, on a monthly uh, cycle, sprint cycle, and setting his objectives for the team on that monthly sprint cycle is really easy because he just goes to here and says, what's important? And if I come along and say to him, oh, could you do this? He recently refers back to this and says, where is it on there? And then I realize, that actually, it's not that important. It's just the thing that I got an email about a few minutes ago, and I should actually just leave him to it. Uh, so it's to understand your object objectives and how you contribute, how your training contributes, and your stakeholders are more engaged, and they know what you're doing. We had, again, I'll go back to the example, we had our CIO talking to us about monitoring, and we, we said, we, we want to do it, we're saying exactly what you're 